Okay, <laughs> we're talking. We're back. We're talking. We're back. It's a dinosaur story. We're back. A dinosaur story. There's a specific reason I wanted to talk about this film. And it's very much just that I remember uh, the poster. Like, this is something that is so steeped into my nostalgia and my identity. Just the idea of this poster and the one scene where all the dinosaurs are walking down the parade. Like, that is so steeped in my brain. It is just there forever. Like, that's all I remember from this film. It, I, it's so ingrained in my head that I sometimes just wake up and I just think, is this a real movie? Is this based on something real? Or have I just created this figment of an idea of a fake movie in my brain? Because to me, it never felt real. It was just a picture I have of an orange T-Rex walking down a parade. And I'm like, is that a real thing? And then every so often, I'm reminded this is a real thing. And it's a movie called We're Back, A Dinosaur Story. So I wanted to talk about it because clearly I've been thinking about it for a while, but I haven't been thinking about it at all, if I'm really honest. Because my memory of this movie, again, it's just the parade scene and kind of the opening bit with the stupid bird family. That's it. Everything in between those moments and after those moments, I have no idea what was happening. So when I sat down to watch this for this video, I was like, I can't wait to be fueled by nostalgia and just bring up like, I remember seeing this when I was a kid. I remember like having my life revolve around these scenes and these characters. I remembered fuck all about this movie. And it's not that good. And like, I like a good kids movie. I, I know this one, I think more than any other film we've talked about is aimed for a younger demographic. But this is just so noisy and ugly and boring that it upsets me. So let's run down the actual plot of this film because it's only like 70 minutes and it's really weird. Or is it 80 minutes? It's not a long movie at all. So basically, we open up on this bird family. The youngest bird baby is kind of getting picked on. His mother, who was played by Rhea Perlman, is like, hey, don't you worry. You'll be fine. But the kid's like, don't, mom, I gotta be strong and tough. I'm gonna go leave the nest. So he jumps off the tree and lands on the golf ball of John Goodman's Rex, who was a dinosaur. And then he, the dinosaur's like, well, I think you got a mama bird who's very worried about you there, buddy. Why don't I tell you the story about when I was worried or when I learned a lesson? And then... You know, just to cap off the story, like, what's to start there, a bird and the dinosaur have to tell a story. So, cool. That's fine. The animation is fluid. Is it very 90s? Yeah, it is. And it's kind of annoying at times. The animation is fine. The voice acting is good for the most part. And then when it just gets into, like, the rest of the story, it's very annoying and doesn't explain itself. So, we start in the prehistoric era. The dinosaurs are evil. They're mean. They're angry trying to eat people this professor brings his alien in a big stupid ship the alien who i can't remember what his name is it's very marvin the martian he mixed with just like some like the honey nut cheerios b i hate him and he's just like hey you want to try the the brain grain he gives them like a box of cereal that makes him think so they feed this cereal to the dinosaur and he's like hey i'm john goodman now so then he like walks into this room he's wearing a name tag he meets the other dinosaurs we have Dweeb, who is the stupid one that's the herbivore dinosaur that I can't remember the name of, the Dilophophis dinosaur and something like that. You know, you, you get it. He's the idiot one. You have Woog, who's the Triceratops, who is almost just toying the line between a stereotypical African-American and this type of media. Just, just toying the line a little bit. It's very obvious. And then you have Ilsa, who is a horny pterodactyl who gets super turned on and lays an egg when she sees Rex. You're like, whoa, okay. Woog, Dweeb, and Elsa. Okay. And then they're like, I guess we're talking too. And then we learn the actual plan, which is very Spielbergian because he produced this. Him and his producing partners made this. The plan is we're going to go see the professor. It's either Professor New Eyes, Blue Eyes, True Eyes, Glue Eyes, it's a certain type of eye that plays off the villain screw eyes. The the good the good eyeball professor is like, "Hi, I gave you my cool stuff. That's a cereal. 
Now you can think straight. And I have a wishing machine. The wishing machine can go to the past, present, the middle, present, and the future, where you can literally see the wishes of kids. And a lot of kids in the 90s, but not where I'm from, because I'm not from the 90s, are wishing to see you guys. And for some reason, maybe it's because a Jurassic Park movie came out. That's probably it. They, they want to see dinosaurs in real life because there's literally a scene where we're at like, the theater and Jurassic Park is playing. So kids want to see dinosaurs now. So I'm like, what if I give dinosaurs my cereal, make them smart and talkative, and then ship them to New York City? So that's what he does. The dinosaurs are like, let's do the plan. So they do that. Then the dinosaurs head to New York City. They fall into the river where they meet this kid named Louie. Louie has no friends and he was wishing to meet some friends and he just happens to be friends of dinosaurs. Louie is your street tough Bart Simpson-esque kid where he's like, I don't need no slack from nobody. I'm running away from home to join the Soikis. And you're like, shut up. Louie is a very interesting character because he's... Very much just like that tough street head kid, but he's not actually from the streets. He's just running away and built a weird floating boat for some reason. So then he meets the dinosaurs. They're going to head to the circus. They have to get downtown. In order to do that, they're going to go through the parade. He goes with Elsa for a second. They fly in the sky where he meets a woman who loses her hat. This is Cecilia? Celia? A young woman played by Yerdley Smith. And this is the thing. I love Yerdley Smith. I think she's awesome. I love her because she's getting paid a lot of money just to talk. She doesn't have to change her voice for anything. You can't hear Celia and not think this is Lisa Simpson. But you know what? You're doing great work. I can't complain about that. So now we have the street tough kid who's actually not street tough. The high society girl who's not really high society. Her parents are just assholes. Now they're going to be friends and team up with the dinosaurs. And what I really like about that one scene is like when we go to Celia's house She's like, my parents, they're not really nice to me. And Louis's first reaction is like, what, they beat you or something? That's a great line for a kid's show. Just a kid so inept about everything in the real world. He's like, what, your parents beat you? It is not funny, but I'm like, that came out of nowhere. Louis has not been portrayed as that kind of character. So, okay, that's an interesting choice to make. The parade scene, it's the only one I could think of. Did not go in the way I remembered it in my head. It just turns into a big song where Rex is just stomping his feet and singing all the way throughout the city. It's fine, I guess. It looks cool. They get to, like, the circus. It's the new eye, blue eye, true eyes, brother is circus, screw eye. He's got a screw in his eye. He makes the kids sign a contract where they live for him and they work for him. Martin Short's a clown. The clown has a funny bit where he's, like, actually just, like, when, like, the actual re resolution for the story, the clown is, like, a funny bit where he's just dropping a bunch of shit into, like, the hands of Screw Eyes, and it's like, that's kind of funny. Is it, though? It is, I guess. I don't know. It's fine, but in order to save the kids from this evil contract at the Soikis, we see that the dinosaurs revert back to their dinosauric selves and save them, but the power of true love brings them back to life, and they go to work at the Natural History Museum, where kids can come in and see them. Kind of night at the museum -y. Okay. <laughs> but then you see, like, they get time off because Rex goes golfing later and tells the story to Buster. So clearly they have time off in between all that stuff where they can actually, like, talk and explore ideas and have creative, like, endeavors. So I'm like, you're just... Because we saw, like, the kids across the world dreaming of the dinosaurs. Let's stick them in New York, have no children of color except in the bubbles. Very, very weird. It's, I, I get why it's made. Again, it's right there in the middle of dinosaur fever. Jurassic Park is either coming out or is out. And you can go like to your local VHS store or video rental place. Your kid's like, mom, I want to go rent the dinosaur movie. And she's like, sorry, all we have is this one where John Goodman's a singing dinosaur who plays golf. So you get that for your kid, and it's like, there's dinosaurs, they learn a lesson about love and hardship, you, you distract them for like 90 minutes maybe, less than 90 minutes, but you're like, you're keeping your kids distracted. You're winning in that regard. But it doesn't really add up to anything. It looks fine. The animation is fine. The voice acting, I think, is very impressive for what this film's trying to be. It looks clean. It sounds clean. It flows fast, but I'm like, there's not much to it. There is a really interesting scene I do like where we see Woog and Dweeb on like the sidecar motorcycle. They're going down the streets and it kind of like breaks off and they just kind of like meet up with each other again. I thought that was kind of cool. It was very fluid and very fun to look at. 
but I just don't really care. And maybe I'm too old. Maybe I'm just like, oh, my nostalgia blocked me from actually enjoying this. Or maybe it's just because this is a bad story, but it doesn't really do anything fun. Formulaic. I think a kid in the 90s still wouldn't enjoy this. They'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. I wanted to see the scary dinosaurs, though. But here we go. <laughs> That's something, I guess. So thanks, Mom. I just watched this. Bad story. Good voicing. Not my favorite dinosaur thing to come out. But it exists. And we got to see a dinosaur play golf. So who can who who can complain about that? I could. And I did. I did. So thank you guys for watching this rendition of Comedic Tales. Because yes, this is a comedy. Thank you guys for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck. Don't worry, folks. They're not back forever. Just head over to the Natural Museum of History.